Hello everyone and welcome to this another episode of 3D Prototyping in Unity. My name is Kasanas. In the last episode, we took care of this character's walk. We can transition from idle to the walk. Everything is treadmill. It takes place on the little block, and the, the, the player can then look at the actual animation. In today's episode, I'd like to take a look at the run, transitioning from the walk to the run. Okay, let's get started. Okay, so there's only a handful of things that need to be done in order to allow our character to move from the walk to the run. All right, let's start off with our actual animator. So I'm going to go in, select my custom character, my custom player, and go to the animator itself. In my animator tab, I can see our very simplistic, or currently very simplistic, uh, our state machine. Right now, we've only got this sub-state, which contains all of our idle animation, as well as our player walk state. Now, what I want to do is go into my actual project, to my actual model, find my player run, wherever that might be. Where is my player run? Here it is, player run, and drag it and drop it onto the screen. All right, now, there's a couple of different things that I want to happen. First of all, I definitely want my player to be able to go from its walk to the run. So I'm gonna click on the walk, I'm gonna right click, say make transition, and go across to the run. I also want the player to be able to go from the, from the run to the walk. So once again, click, right click, make transition, and drop it off. Now basically, how the run is going to work. Uh, if you hold shift, and a direction key, the character's gonna run. If you're just holding the W key, for example, the player's gonna, the character's gonna walk, but if you suddenly hold down the shift, I want the player to start to run, all right? So we're gonna have to set up a few different things here. First of all, we're gonna wanna set up a, a new parameter over here. Uh, I'm gonna hit the plus sign up here with parameter select, I'm at the plus sign, and I'm gonna add myself a, a bool. And that bool I'm gonna call running. All right. If running is equal to true, uh, then our character is actually running, and if running is false, uh, then we're walking. All right, or we're idle, depending. Now, what we want to do is, if we're in the walk state and we hold down our shift key, that's our plan, then we want our character to start running. So our transition from run from walk to run, clicking on that little arrow. First of all, I'm going to turn off has exit time because I don't want that and I'm going to drag this down uh, and whatever you put in here it's going to be up to you you might want to adjust this value so you've got a smooth transition but it's going to be totally up to you all right I'm going to go through and adjust this later on as well I'm going to go down to the very bottom once I've got this set up the way I like it and I'm going to add something to my conditions list plus and I'm going to set it up so that if my running is true then we're going to transition from walk to run all right now the same thing is going to be true if we're going from running to walk. If our running is, let's click on that little arrow, our transition, turn off our has exit time, drag this back, and again, like I said, we'll, we'll play with these values later on to make sure we've got a good transition. If our running is false, so I'm going to set this to running, oops, running. If our running is false, then I want to be back into the into the player walk state. All right. So if we're holding down the W key and we hit shift, then we start running. If we let go of the shift key, we, we're walking still. We don't want to just stop moving. Now, there's a couple of other things we want to do. We definitely want to set it up so that if we let go of both of our keys at the same time, uh, then we're going to go to the idle state. So I'm going to make from my run, from my player run, I'm going to click on it. I'm going to right click, make transition, and drag it and drop it on this sub state. Now, when I do so, when I drop it off, it's going to open up this brand new little window and it's going to allow me to choose whatever state I want it to go into. Our player idle left is our actual default state. So I'm just going to have it enter that state. All right. But you can see that I have the option to pick any of the states that are available within that state machine inside this little sub state. All right. You can see that, or I can just drop it off right at the idle sub state. It's up to you. But if I want to go directly to an existing state within the sub state, I'm going to go over states and I'm going to choose the one that I want. In my case, I want to go to player idle left. I'm going to click it. Okay. I'm going to click on the transition. And once again, I'm going to set up my transition time so it's appropriate. I'm going to move this down. I'm going to shrink it up a bit. I'm going to turn off has exit time because I don't want that to be the case. And I actually want to go from the running state to the idle state if my walk value, my walk float, is less than 0 0.1. All right, so if we're less than 0 0.1, I want to move back into the idle state. It's exactly the same condition that I want to leave the the walk to the idle. All right, so if the if the player is holding down the W key and the shift key at the same time, but let's go to the W key, I want to immediately transition into the idle state. Now, we have to go 
back into our substate here. I'm going to double click on this. And what I need to do, this ugly, ugly, <laughs> ugly, ugly substate right here, I I'm going to leave it like this. I'm not going to actually go in and convert it so that it's going to the exit. I'm just going to actually drop it off at the up, uh, at the up state to the base layer. Uh, and watch and see what happens. Let's say I wanted to go from the idle immediately to the run. I'm holding down the W key, I'm holding down the shift key, and I want to go immediately to the run. What I'm going to do, click on my idle, right click, make transition, and drop it off at the base. Bam! It's going to open up the brand new window again like we did before, and it's going to give me the options again for the states I want to go to. In this case, I want to move to the player run state, so I'm going to click on player run. Now you can see what happened here is I got a triple arrow that's occurred in both of these locations. The first one, well, let's take a look at this one first, from the, base, from the base layer into player idle. If I take a look at it now, there's two reasons to transition, from our run and from our walk. We already set both of these up. Also, if I take a look at this transition, I've got two, from our idle to our run and from our, our idle to our walk. The walk has already been set up the way we like it. I'm going to click on this one here that goes to the run. I'm going to turn off has exit time like I always do. I'm going to drag this all the way back so I've got a, a nice idle. I move in transition to a nice, uh, a nice smooth transition. And I'm going to add in a couple of different conditions. First of all, if running is true. If running is true, I want to transition over there, but only if we're also holding down our walk key. So if our walk float is also greater than a certain value, I want to transition. So I'm going to add an additional state here, plus if our walk float is greater than, and in this case, I'm going to get a value of 0 0.05. Now, the reason why I've done that is because it's a value that is lower. It'll always transition to the running immediately if we are holding down our shift key and we are holding down the W key. It'll go immediately to the running. Otherwise, it'll go through the walk first, and then it'll transition to the run. Okay? I want to do exactly the same thing for each and every one of these states. So I'm going to right click, make transition, drop it off. It's going to say where do I want to go? I want to go to the run. I'm going to click on this guy again, turn off has exit time, drag it back, drag it down, come all the way down here and add my if running is true. Running is true and if my walk float is greater than decimal 05. Alright, I'm going to do the same thing for the shift left. Make transition, drop it off, choose my run, click on this guy, turn off this has exit time, a lot of people forget that, turn that off, drag it back, bang, 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 drag this one down, add in my run is true, boop, running is true, and add in my walk float is greater than decimal zero five. And lastly, for this last one, right click, make transition, go across to my run, click on this guy here, turn off ex exit time, and scroll this back, come on down, turn on my running, running is true, and lastly, set up my walk float is greater than decimal zero five. Okay, great. With that finished, with this set up, let's go back and take a look at our base layer. In our base layer now, we've got ourselves all the transitions showing here as well, so everything is set up properly here. Now, I'm going to save this, and we'll take a look at the code. Okay, there's not a whole lot of code to get this operating properly, only a few things that we need to do. So first of all, click on your custom player, scroll down and find your player controller. We're still doing all of our work within the player controller. Oops, I'm going to double click it. We're going to open it up. Mono develop, of course I get my error, click, bring it back up, click. All right, and let's zoom in a few times. View, zoom in, view, zoom in. View, zoom in one more time just for fun. View, zoom in. All right, there's a few things that we need to add into this in order to get it working properly. First of all, we're going to need a bool that represents our running state. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go in here and just below uh, the move, I'm going to add in a bool that I'm going to call running. Let's call it is running. You know what? Let's call it is running. Is running. All right, we'll call it is running just to make sure that we it's different than the one that we have in the other side. So I've got is running there. Now, the next thing I really want to do is I, I really have to do almost exactly the same thing that we did for the walk. All right, for the walk. There's not a whole lot that needs to be done. As long as we're walking, then we can probably be running as well. What we have to do, first of all, is figure out if we're actually trying to run, if we're pushing the shift button. So let's, first of all, go over here and we'll take a look at the... Um, available options in the project settings input. 
uh, and we used vertical for the for the running. Um, for let's say for fire three, let's take a look at fire three here. Um, it allows us to use the left uh, shift button or the mouse button the mouse 2 button to be able to uh, activate the fire 3 uh, axes. All right, so we're going to use the fire 3 axes, which is going to give us access to the left shift button. So let's open that up again. Basically, all I want to do, first of all, is right below move, where we, where we define move, let's go up here and define something that we'll call, um, we'll just call it run. Let's go back up here and is running, just below is running, we'll declare a float that we'll call uh, run. We'll call it run. All right, let's move down here, and really and truly, we can we can do this a number of different ways. But I'm going to set this to be run. Run is going to be equal to, and in this situation, because we're using a single button, an axis with a single button, uh, we're no, we don't have to worry about a, a plus and a minus value. All we're going to get is a single value, and that value is either going to be on or off, as far as we're concerned. We're either running or we're not running. Okay, so in this situation, our input is going to be coming from our get axes raw. We're going to use the get axes raw. And get axes raw is based instead of having a value that that ranges from 0 to 1, it's either 0 or 1. All right, it's either on or off. So we're not getting all the in between values. Uh, it's either on or off. So we can we can either use get axis raw or we can actually use our uh, or we can use it doesn't really matter which one we use. I'm going to use get axis raw just to see if we're actually getting a value. Okay. So get axis raw. What axis are we trying to get? We're trying to get our fire three. All right, and that's what we want. Let's put that in there. And basically, what we want to do is we want to uh, we want to make sure that, that if this value is on, if it's on, then we want to set our value accordingly. We want to make sure that, that our running becomes true. So if run, if run is greater than zero, that means we're pushing down on our on our uh, fire three key. So if that's true, what we want to do is set our, our is running value is running is running equal to true. Spell it right equal to true. All right, otherwise else is running is going to equal false. And just like we did with our player uh, our player anim down here where we set our walk value, we are going to set the value our player anim dot set in this case it's set bool because we're setting a boolean value, our boolean value for our running. Which one do we want to set? We want to set running. And we want to set it with the value of is running. All right, so this little bit of code here should take care of our, our character actually running. Let's file save that, and let's check it out. So we'll minimize that. All right, so with that in place, I don't have any errors, nothing in my console. Everything is looking good. Why is this taking so long? Console, empty, clear this. Everything is looking good. I'm going to hit play, and when I do so, our character is in idle. When I hit the W key, my character begins walking. When I hit the Shift key at the same time, my character begins running. All right, if I let go of the shift key, my character goes back to the walk. If I hold it down again, he goes into the run. If I let go of the W key, my character moves into the idle. Okay, that is working exactly as it should. It's working very, very well. Let's take a look, W, hold it down, and let's zoom around here. We can see our character running along. We are scrolling along with our actual uh, camera as well. This is working exactly as it should. All right, guys. That's all I really wanted to show you for today. I hope you enjoyed that episode. If you did, let me know down in the comments. If you didn't, that is perfectly fine. Uh, just let me know why. Give me a dislike if you want to. I don't care. Just let me know why you're doing it. I, I can always, I'm always trying to improve. And with your help, I can. All right? But if you give me a dislike uh, and, and say, you know, I, I don't say anything at all, just dislike, I'll never know what I did wrong. So I'm always willing to try and improve. All right, guys? Thumbs up thumbs down, comments down below, and if you haven't done so, please take a few seconds to subscribe. Have yourselves a wonderful day, everyone.